Guten Tag! Guten Tag! <laughs> Hello everyone, Dar here. So, as you may have seen, I've released Volume 1 of a MIDI soundtrack that I've been working on for quite a while now. Uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend giving it a listen. Uh, you can find a link to it here in the video description or at the end cards of uh, this video. For those of you that browse the ZDoom forums, you might be familiar with the, one of the project's earlier incarnations, the Wolfendoom Chronicles, or Castle Wolfenstein Chronicles. That version of the project had culminated in a nice little uh, four-level Wolfendoom demo uh, wad, of which you can find a link for in the description if you're interested. Um, since that demo, uh, updates and news about the project have been in the dark, but uh, believe me, there has been a lot going on behind the scenes. So today, with the project lead's blessing, I'm proud to be able to present this little showcase to you all. Also, before I begin, I want everyone to keep in mind that this is still an alpha, so everything shown here could be subject to change in the future. Wolfenstein Rising is to be a total conversion mod built within the GZ Doom source port. It is intended to be a sequel to the original Wolfenstein 3D, while at the same time including elements from Return to Castle Wolfenstein. By the ending, it's also planned to make a connection to Doom, but anyways, let's, let's begin with the story, shall we? Set in the year 1955, ten years after the end of the Second World War, as the Cold War was just beginning to brew, the world was met with a terrible shock. The long-thought defeated Nazi war machine had resurrected and suddenly reappeared as if from out of thin air. As they quickly moved to capture key infrastructure and subjugate the population, many nations the world over soon found themselves at the total and complete mercy of their new captors. Along with the amazing speed and precision at which they carried out this operation, this Blitzkrieg success was also due in part to a new, never-before-seen weapon. The occupying forces have been heard only referring to them as the Ubermensch. Tall, bipedal monstrosities made of metal, towering over even the tallest of men. These advanced, walking weapons platforms made short work of most of the world's conventional forces. However, just as all hope in the world seemed to be lost, there was still one man in that world that could change the tide of this one-sided struggle. This is his story. <laughs> Pretty dramatic, huh? Wrote that myself. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, that's the uh, premise we've got going here. Uh, you know, our boy BJ winds up getting called back into action by none other than Jack Stone, the current director of the Office of Secret Actions. The mod will be split into three different episodes. Uh, episode one will see our hero hop around to different places around the world. Uh, particularly, uh, you know, into Germany, Japan, and possibly even Egypt. Episode 1's level design and inspiration is to be a mix of classic Wolfenstein 3D, but with uh, some levels taking inspiration from uh, Return to Castle Wolfenstein's, uh, you know, maps. After a bit of globe trotting and acquiring intel along the way, BJ discovers that the Nazis are operating out of either the uh, Arctic or Antarctic. Yeah, we, we haven't totally decided on which, it's just, uh, yeah, it's more of a minor detail, really, but, uh... So anyways, that's where Episode 2 begins. So, being either at the North or South Poles, uh, logically, it's going to be very cold and there's going to be lots of snow. So, Episode 2's maps uh, might go for a sort of Arctic Wolf-inspired level design. And, uh, yeah, BJ will be fighting through ice caverns, outposts, and eventually the base of operations, which happens to be a rocket base. However, by the end of this episode, he discovers that this base is only a mere staging point, and that the real main base is on the moon. 
After wreaking havoc on the rocket base, our hero hitches a ride on a rocket on its way to the lunar base. That's where Episode 3 starts. Episode 3, Lunar Legacy, uh, will take place on a very high-tech and fancy moon base. The tone and atmosphere is planned to take uh, inspiration from Astro Stein levels. Uh, also, earlier, uh, I had mentioned that uh, by the end of the story here, we, um, you know, things will, will have made a connection to Doom. Well, as BJ gets deeper into the facility, he discovers research for plasma weapons and even research into teleportation technology. And the icing on top of this, uh, you know, cake here is that uh, their logo in the base is going to be somewhat of a proto UAC symbol. Uh, I had suggested this proto UAC idea since I thought it'd be kind of cool to you know, kind of do like a um, you know, like a you know, pull pull an Operation Paperclip sort of thing and uh, have some of these former Nazi scientists create what would later become the UAC from you know Doom. Anyways, uh, all this eventually leads to a big final showdown against the head Nazi scientist uh, leading the projects on this lunar base. However, before being defeated, he activates the teleporter and manages to open up a portal to hell for a brief moment. And so now, BJ fights against the true final boss, you know, this powerful super demon. Yeah, after a very chaotic battle, the lunar base is heavily damaged and will soon explode. And so the, the final level will see the player basically making a mad rush to, to one of the rocket ships on the base, you know, trying to get to it before the timer runs out and the lunar base is blown to high hell. And then after all this, you know, BJ manages to land back on Earth and you know, receives a big hero's welcome and, you know, the world is saved, you know, cue the big fanfare and roll the credits. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty much the outline we're currently working with here and that we've got planned out for the moment. But, um, anyways, now on to some of the nitty-gritty stuff here. Let's, uh, let's jump into the weapons uh, thus far, shall we? Helping me demonstrate this arsenal of new weapons and toys is none other than my good friend, Mr. Bones. What? H health insurance? Don't worry about it, Bones. Archie can just res you back for each take. So, first up, in weapon slot number one, we've got the trusty knife. This iteration of the knife is certainly a lot more reliable compared to its original counterpart. Uh, just as the enemies chasing after you pack a hell of a punch, so does your weapon of last resort. Fast, and dishes out loads of damage to help you frag those baddies and get those much-needed ammo drops from them. Also, the alt-fire mode for the knife is a throwing ability. Uh, handy if you want to soften up your foes from a distance uh, before they get right up in your face, or vice versa. And heck, you could even knock them off a ledge. In weapon slot number two, you've got your trusty pistol. However, just as the knife was more reliable than its original counterpart, so too is this particular Luger. Primary fire is your usual semi-auto firing mode, however, it also comes with an alt fire that shoots a three-round burst. Great for burst damage before moving to your next weapon upgrade, which is... The Submachine Gun. In development, this has been labeled the STG-55, the MP-50, and also been labeled the MP-55. For this presentation, I'll just call it the MP-50. As implied by the name, it's pretty much the MP-40, but with an upgrade. Sort of like how the new Luger has a burst fire mode. Um, the MP-50's primary fire is your usual Bonmac fire, of course. However, the MP-50 comes equipped with a... <laughs> underbarrel shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> this ult fire is great for delivering big damage when enemies get a little bit too close for comfort. Next up, occupying weapon slot number 4 is the Bolt Action Rifle. A handy weapon for engaging those pesky, long-range targets. Clicking the Alt Fire button will, uh, as expected, bring up the Iron Sight and provide a slight zoom to help you pick off those distant enemies. <coughs> so, the Panzerfaust is pretty cool, right? Right? Well, in comes its upgraded big brother, the Tigerfaust. 
Primary fire is your usual single rocket of explosive fun, but what really makes the Tiger Faust so deadly is its alt fire. <laughs> what? You know, it shoots two rockets at once or something? Three, perhaps? <laughs> Try five! After a charging sequence, the Tiger Faust lets loose a cluster of five rockets at once. Now, if that ain't a room clear, I don't know what is. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Lastly, at least for this presentation anyways, is the Plasma Gun, or Pulse Cannon. It fires very rapidly, and hits very hard. Its alt fire mode has it fire three projectiles at once out of its three barrels. This is a weapon that is very good for dealing with particularly beefy enemies with a lot of health. Butar, where's the chain gun? <laughs> you may be asking. Well, fret not. There will be a chain gun, it's just, uh, it's, it's been sort of in and out of development, and, uh, well, hey, we, we all love the Venom, right? Of course we do, it's a silly question. Um, now what if I said you could have two, and, well, it, you know, you know, maybe it's just better if, uh, <laughs> we just take a peek here in the, uh, the project file. <laughs> <laughs> In this section, I will quickly go over the current lineup of enemies thus far. The Pistol Guards reprise their role once more as cannon fodder, <laughs> but this time with a stylish white uniform reminiscent of classic Wolfenstein's officers. Uh, the fire rate is just about as fast as theirs too, I think. We've got some tan-uniformed African Corps uh, SS guys for those incursions into Egypt in Episode 1. Then you've got some of the more high-tech soldiers, like these shock troopers, for instance. These guys are more armored and beefier than the other two. Speaking of beefy, these big guys are the uber soldats. Big, tanky, and packing a machine gun. Definitely don't want to trade fire with these guys for too long. You like dags? Dags? Yeah, I like dags. Oh, dogs. Yeah, I like dags. I like caravans more, though. Next up, we have turrets. Now, I think, uh, turrets are scary because, um... Next we have the Gyro Panzer. Oh, this one's new. What does, uh, what does this one do? Okay. Next, we've got the Ubermensch, which uh, are basically the autonomous mechs, uh, early designs being a heavy, slow-moving, almost endearing kind of mech. And then the other newer one is a terrifying red plasma shooting Terminator nightmare. <laughs> The fake Hitlers also make an appearance during the prologue level, which is uh, planned to be a reimagining of the Mech Hitler boss battle from uh, Wolfenstein 3D. Uh, speaking of which, um, he's not uh, spawnable in this current build uh, since I think he's kind of you know he's undergoing ch uh, some tweaking and balancing. But um, anyways, uh, that's just some of the enemies so far. Uh, so let's uh, let's move on to the final segment. 
before we wrap things up here completely, I just uh, want to take a moment here to <laughs> appreciate this little screen that uh, Reyes had put together. Uh, this available memory screen is one of the screens uh, shown when you're waiting in the main menu, as you probably saw at the beginning of this video, probably. Uh, obviously, it's, you know, it's a parody of Wolfenstein 3D's, uh, you know, screen. However, the thing I find really novel about this is uh, it also acts as a, as a way of telling the player what features or uh, functions are enabled in the mod. Um, yeah, like, like, I'm sure we've all had this experience before, at least once, you know, regarding when you're know, downloading a map or map set or something, right? So, you go download a map or map set, and either because the creator forgot to mention it in the original post, or, you know, you made a beeline for the download link before reading the whole post, or, you know, if at all, <laughs> um, you wind up wondering to yourself, is crouching, jumping, or mouse looks supposed to be enabled for this map set, or no? <laughs> And uh, with this, however, you, you know, you've got this nice little screen that shows up in the menu, and not only does it, you know, hit that nostalgia factor, but it's also very nice for being, um, you know, it's, it's informational regarding uh, these uh, features. So I, I thought I thought this was really <laughs> this is really neat. Another thing that uh, I want to point out is that um, for the most part, I'm just the I'm, I'm the soundtrack guy on this project, and you know, every once in a while, yeah, I'll, I'll send over. Yeah, I'll shoot over some, you know, cool ideas for, you know, story, or, like, oh, this, this would be cool to do, or, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, for the most part, the, the real brains behind this project, though, is, uh, Raiz. He, uh, he's, he's been handling the lion's share of the work on the, the project area, from, you know, he's, you know, mapping, uh, designing the logos, and changing up the user interface, you know, making a new HUD, you know, heads-up display and everything. It's, you know, it's a lot of work. <laughs> So, <clears throat> it's here now that I finally want to get to the, you know, main reason why I've put together this uh, particular video, this mod showcase. Over the past couple of years, I've come to find out that there are quite a lot of talented and creative people among this channel's uh, viewer base. And, you know, everything from fellow musicians, video creators, level designers for Doom, or, you know, just mappers in the, you know, Doom community in general, right? Uh, you know, graphics artists, writers, and much more. Yeah, was, um, yeah, I'm hoping that some of you out there will, you know, take an interest in becoming part of this project, you know, to create the best, or at the very least, a really damn good Wolfenstein mod for Doom. Um, you know, if you're interested in becoming a part of this project, or, you know, just like to follow the development, um, down in the pinned comment of this video, you can find links to the official Discord server, um, as well as a link to the thread over on the ZDoom forums. Currently, we could certainly use some more mappers, uh, since this is quite a large project with a lot of levels planned. Uh, we're also looking for some spriders and or, you know, uh, texture artists to, you know, help uh, with creation of more custom assets, you know, ranging from anywhere from, you know, new weapons, Walls, floors, enemies, yeah, you name it. Uh, yeah, I think that about wraps everything up. Uh, again, uh, you can contact Raiz through the Discord server, or you can send him a PM uh, over on the ZDoom forums, or you can also leave a comment here on this video, as I'm sure he'll probably be reading the comments uh, section here. But, um,. Yeah, so once again, I've been Dar, and I hope you all found this project uh, showcase interesting. And I hope to see some of you uh, out there join uh, Raiz and I in our effort to create Wolfenstein Rising. So, thanks for watching, and take care.